Alright everyone, it's time for the occult video number 297. What constitutes authentic religious or spiritual ceremonies, magical ceremonies? Uh, my opinion on this is that it's constituted by the will of the people conducting them. Uh, there are certain groups within the realm of magic and philosophy and so forth that are very puristic. They think that if it was written down in a 500 year old book, that's the proper way to do it. If it was written yesterday, probably not, unless it's got a pedigree, as they would call it based on that 500 year old book. I've gone through literary history in quite a bit of depth at this point, having read thousands of books, edited hundreds of them, in, again in depth, uh, and, and gone through them over the course of over a thousand years really of literature. And what I've concluded is that people who argue the pedigree or purity argument within the occult uh, don't know what they're talking about. The problem is that all of these systems intertwine like a, like a bowl of sticky spaghetti. And basically, that's the literary tradition of the occult. Over time, everything borrows from everything else. You would think of like, uh, think of like the kind of religious or spiritual manuscripts you'd get in the Renaissance. So here you have an era people are exploring other cultures, trade routes by and large are opening up in the wake of the Dark Ages. You're, you're getting all sorts of bric-a-brac works and snippets and folklore and magical talismans and and potions and alchemical preparations from all of these different corners of the world and they're all intermixing together and they start informing one another the best example I can give is the Petit Albert this is an old book it's from the mid 18th century so it's not exactly new it is a bric-a-brac work it's essentially a cosmopolitan grimoire it also contains like it's sort of the missing link between the older wave high ritual magic grimoire thing uh, which was often symbolic in nature, intertwined with alchemy, of course, the Renaissance, medieval era, whatever, uh, and older works, I mean uh, newer works, starting in the 1800s that get more towards the domestic recipe book side of things. By the way, when you say recipe book, like in the sense of cooking, that's a takeoff of the term receipt book, which was apothecarian. Recipes in the, in the form of cooking and apothecarian like pills and, and emetics sort of recipes were basically joined in the same works along with like uh, family physician, medical tips, that was part of it. Uh, this is again a takeoff from folk medicine. Um, certainly like tips and tricks like hey, here's how to make dye, here's how to make pest you know, con control spray or something. If you look at like the Petit Albert and similar contemporary works, they all contain that too. They, they've got all sorts of medical preparations and tips and tricks, things like that. Now, in such a convoluted system, can you really establish a pedigree necessarily? Not always. Uh, I can establish the pedigree of the sort of late pre-modern, we're talking the end of the 1700s and on, fortune-telling and dream interpretation sort of divination works. But again, I can't necessarily establish one solid pedigree because if I go back to the Book of Knowledge, which is literally contemporary to the Founding Fathers, which sort of starts some of that material, there's other material in there that later gets that falls out of favor that's more on the superstitious end it got refined in the late 1700s to be more scientific and then of course you get it rolled up with stories about Napoleon and and all of these other generals and leaders and stuff there's apparently there's a mystic book of some sort I saw it in the back of one of the others I was editing and it might not be extant at all that I, I think said that it was Thomas Jefferson's fortune teller or something I couldn't find anything on it. maybe it was Andrew Jackson I can't remember it was a US president or an early founding figure. And I thought this sounded funny, but I haven't been able to find a single snippet of info about the book. This is, by the way, what, another reason why I'm doing the literary thing, because otherwise some of these books will disappear, like except in digital form. There won't be any physical copies of them anymore. That's a tenuous at best existence at all, because of course, <laughs> you're one you know, potential server crash away from the unavailability of that book worldwide. I would say, authentic systems, which tend to be informed by the literary, although not necessarily, are difficult to establish. For instance, you'd look at the modern-day neo-pagan. The modern-day neo-pagan may practice rituals that are a mock-up and similar to ancient ritualism. A lot of it's based on second and third hand accounts of those rituals from outside of the Norse pagan religion. Even further, the actual behavior and ethics that are applied to the ritual system are totally different. They're, they're westernized, they're Christianized. Um, so you'd have, you, you know, the, the person doesn't consider it virtuous to go out and hack their enemies up with a battle axe anymore. Well, certainly the original Norse practitioners thought that was a great idea. That was a, an easy way into Valhalla. 
All you have to do is die with your sword in your hand, so to speak. They don't do that anymore. But that was very, that was literally part of the religion. The battle aspect of things was an integral part of the actual spiritual system. How then can you say that any of the ritualism divorced of that initial context, which was very different back then a thousand years ago, is even authentic at all? But it, it, it shows itself to be authentic in modern practice. I would say, <clears throat> when we look at magic, you see the continuous refinement of things. The same as you have with religion. Religion is continuously refined in keeping with society. In a globalized society with interconnected communication between all corners of the world, this system has accelerated. Spirituality has changed more in the last 20 years than it has in the prior 200. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, I've already seen this. Technology has dragged it in that direction. Cross-communication between cultures, both uh, both trolling and, and attacking each other and debating and also finding common ground, agreement and so forth. The former, unfortunately, more common than the latter. Um, as far as magical and religious ceremonies go, um, I would say most often there's no pedigree. Well, you look at Wicca. Wicca is a great example. Wicca is a new wave religion from the last century. Gardner was not basing it on an authentic witch cult. That, that's sort of a feminized angle of anthropology a la Leland and others. It's it's true in the sense that there were folk superstitions, but they were misinterpreted as being part of a witch cult. That's basically what Leland's work and similar works often boil down to. His romanticist notion, by the way, as well, uh, almost follows in with the noble savage mythology at times, too. It depends on how you interpret the work. Wicca has all of its rituals. Some of them are, are very much, they're, they're nature-centric, they're femme-centric, and, and in the sense of certain cults, certainly, back in ancient Greece or whatever, that would be fairly authentic. But the rituals have nothing to do with the original ecstatic orgies and so forth that were happening. They've been altered. Uh, they've been altered in accordance with new wave Western tradition a la the early 20th century. That's really what it boils down to. Wicca's not a, a, an old religion. It's a modern one. But the rituals and stuff, can we really say they're not authentic? No, of course not. They are within the realm of Wicca. We just have to be honest about where it comes from. If you have some uh, tradition within Mormonism, well, I mean, it's not authentic to the ancient Israelites or something like that because it comes from the mid-1800s. But as far as Mormon ritualism goes, yeah, it was there at the founding with Joseph Smith and all the others, so it's authentic. I think that authentic is more in the eye of the practitioner than it is in some exterior study that looks at long-term traditions because, I mean... It's going to be hard to find almost any magical system from the last three or four centuries that isn't informed by older systems and transmogrifying them over time, especially, again, in the wake of the Renaissance with the reopening of trade routes and so forth in the wake of the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, the fall of Rome and back. Uh, and, of course, Rome was vast and, and powerful, but it didn't extend itself to the whole world didn't contact the Americas, at least as far as we know. We've never dug up a trireme off Oak Island, although that might happen in the future, you never know. Uh, and, and, and so authentic religious and spiritual systems, I would say, is almost a misnomer. Authentic is basically whatever you make it. But historically speaking, it's a different uh, thing altogether. Historically speaking, virtually none of the ritualism people practice is authentic along a genuine pedigree at least, uh, unless you consider going back just far enough to be authentic enough. Like saying, well, it has to be old. Okay, so if the system's from the 1700s, it's okay, but if it's from 1860, somehow it's, it's lesser. There are tight-ass purists within occultism that actually believe this. That's about all. Peace out.